Welcome to worship this morning. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. You notice that we have some different colors up here. Um, I had one other announcement before we... Anyway, welcome to all of you, um, and a special welcome to those who are watching on Facebook or YouTube later on today. Um, in the bulletin, there is a hymn that we're not going to sing. And it's Love Divine, and it's after the Confession and Forgiveness, so we'll go right on after the Confession and Forgiveness to the greeting, and then we'll sing a different song, just so that you know. And also this morning, we will be singing Jesus Loves Me, and I'd like the kids to come up now before we sing Jesus Loves Me. And I'd like you to sit kind of up in this way because we really are crowded here today. Come on up here. are learning that and you know it I yes I know did you were holding a little blanket or something it was would you bring that up here so I want to talk about a color today purple how did you know yeah look at this purple is this a doll blanket or a, a, your your baby blanket <gasps> I love it I lo okay okay Priya you didn't bring it no okay why don't you have a seat? Well, I brought some, a bunch of different things, purple things in my purple bag. Some purple dried flowers that I had to put in a plastic bag because otherwise they're going to crumble up in my bag. Well, yeah. And then here are some good purple things. Oh, no, no, no. I... <laughs> I promised, why don't you sit down, okay? Right I promised Joan, who's, Joan Northhouse, who's loaning these to me for today, that I would, <laughs> that I would quash any booze. But these are purple, right? Yeah. And I think these, and, yep, okay. Yeah, and this one says Peterson. Put it there. Okay, what else do I have in here? I have mug. This is great in the summertime. I fill it up with ice, and it, and it keeps um, ice and water, and it keeps it nice and cold for a good long time. Yeah. Yeah, this is a shawl. It has a hole. Who saw the hole? Yeah, there's lots of, yeah, I bought this yesterday. I went to a, um, a resale store, and I thought, purple, I'm going to talk about purple tomorrow. So I bought it, and then I got it home, and I saw, yeah, it does have a hole in it. But that's okay. I'll fix it. Yeah, it'll be nice for when we're watching TV, because my chair is next to the window. Yeah. Okay, so there's purple thing. Here is something else that has purple on it. 
Do you ever see any purple flowers? Yeah, I, I, just did. I just did. You just did? Where did you see purple flowers? In Here I thought you. Here I thought you went to the uh, to the um, greenhouse thing at Lake Como. You didn't go there, did you? The purple flowers there. My purple cup. Anyway, little purple napkin. And this one is really, really special. No. Well, first I want you to see I'm wearing purple. This is, sometimes pastors wear these, it's called a stole, and my husband Tom's dad was a pastor. He was really, really tall. So this was his stole that, that Tom's mother made. She did all this beautiful embroidery, but this is a stole for Lent, and, and when he retired, actually, he gave these to me, but I can't really wear them without a belt to hold it up, otherwise I trip on them because they're so tall. But this, this is the Lenten stole, and that's the season we're in, and that's why you see purple there, purple there, purple there. You did help purple there. You did help set those up. Yes, there's purple everywhere. You just have to look for it a little bit. But do you know why we use purple for Lent? Anybody know? It's because it is a beautiful color. But it's the color that we use to remind us to say to Jesus, I am sorry for all the bad things I did. Yeah, yep, yep. Purple up there too. It's when we repent, we stop doing bad things, we try to stop doing bad things, we ask God to help us, and we ask God to forgive us. So purple is the color of Lent, blanket, jerseys, bag, cup, shawl, but mostly it's the color of your shirt, it's the color of Lent. Yes, we have someone, Lulu is going to pray for us. You going to come up and pray? She's got a prayer for us. So let's get ready to pray. Dear God, please bless all people, people who are not nice. In God's name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. Time for Sunday school. So what are you going to tell you, what are you going to talk about in Sunday school? Are you going to talk about purple? Forgiveness, asking for forgiveness, telling God we're sorry for our sins. Okay, you may go to Sunday school while we sing. As the deer. <gasps> rise for the confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew yes. us, and lead us so, so that, that we, we may, may delight, delight in, in your, your will, will and walk in your ways. ways to the glory of your holy, your holy name. name. Amen. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. with you and also with you let us pray Lord God you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land guide now the people of your church that following our Savior we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come through your son Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may eat freely of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. That's Genesis 2:15 through 17. Genesis 3, 1 through 7. Now the serpent was made more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say, you shall not eat from any of the trees of the garden. The woman said to the serpent, 
We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat it, of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some of it to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. This ends the reading. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. You can see. gospel for this day is from the fourth chapter of Matthew. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tested by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterward he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdom, kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him. And suddenly angels came and waited upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Beloved in the Lord, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The story begins in the garden. Even though Genesis names only the woman, and the man, it's your story and mine and the story of all humanity. It's when the serpent began to tell us that we could be our own gods, that we didn't need to rely on our creator. It's where the ser serpent challenged the childlike trust we once had. It's where the serpent ridicules and makes fun of the trust simply by putting the notion into our heads that God isn't being straight with us all because of that cunning snake who brought evil into the world. But now wait a minute. We've got to be careful here. It's too easy to blame the fall of creation on that wily serpent when the responsibility is ours, all ours. And you know the rest of the story, don't you? God found the man and the woman in their brand new clothes of fig leaves and asked them, who told you that you were naked? What have you done? 
And then they answered that it was the serpent. And then the whole truth came out. And the woman and the man had eaten the forbidden fruit. So their days in the garden were over. They were cast into a wilderness where they were forced to clear the land and pull the weeds and work the soil in order to eat. And this they would do until they returned to the ground from which they were taken. And then the story continues with words we hear every Ash Wednesday. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. It was under these conditions in the wilderness that they had to learn how to trust God all over again. Now a student went once asked a college professor, where is the Garden of Eden? And the professor answered, 220 Elm Street, Knoxville, Tennessee. What? asked the student. It's someplace in Asia Minor, isn't it? No, replied the professor. For it was in Knoxville, Tennessee, as a child, that my mother sent me to the store with a quarter to buy milk. And I took the quarter and I bought candy, and I ate the whole lot before I got home. And when I got home, I was so ashamed that I hid in the closet. It was there that she found me and asked, Where are you? What have you done? Now, like the professor, each of us, maybe, has our own personal garden, the place or the time when we were first aware of our rebellion, when we tried to hide and were found out? Where and when was yours? Did you bury that knowledge deep within yourself or did you enter your own wilderness of the soul afterward? As hard as it might be to think about, I do hope you've had a garden to wilderness experience. Because without being cast from the garden, the testing and the learning and the growth of the wilderness experience can never happen. We usually think about the wilderness as a bad place, at least when we hear about it in the Bible. We remember how the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years before they could cross into the promised land of Canaan. And you might remember that, ha that they had such an extended stay because they did not trust God to help them. We think of that wilderness time as a time of, time of hardship and longing, and it was. But it was also a time to learn to trust God. The land may have been desolate, but they were not alone. God was with them. For the children of Israel, the wilderness was a place of testing. You have perhaps heard about school and scouting programs that teach wilderness survival skills, like maybe Outward Bound. When the classroom experience is completed, the students are sent out into the wild somewhere in a remote area and for several days, and they're supposed to use what they learn to survive on their own. Maybe they have to eat bugs or sleep on pine needles under a tree. For the students, this wilderness is a place to put their training into practice, a place for further learning, and a place to be tested as well. As Jesus stood dripping wet after his baptism, that voice from heaven claimed him and verified his identity. This is my son, the beloved, in him I am well pleased. And right from the water, Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Spirit, where for 40 days he had no food, neither did, did he have shelter from the sun or a blanket for the cold at night. Jesus didn't enter the wilderness the way we do. He did not go there by accident or because of his own rebellion or because he was being victimized by the power of evil. He went there obediently out of obedience, voluntarily, out of obedience to God. Now, some scholars say that it was at his baptism that Jesus became fully aware of who he was, 
the beloved Son of God. Think about it for a minute. Can you imagine the head trip that could go along with that? Can you imagine what it might have been like to suddenly understand that the power is in his disposal? So the Spirit sends Jesus to the wilderness to be tested. For Jesus, the wilderness was a place of obedience. And after 40 days, with no food, the tempter appears, you know, Satan, the same guy, the same being as the serpent was, he, that, the one that came to Adam and Eve, and he says to Jesus, oh, I know you're really hungry, Jesus. You know, you have the power to turn these stones into bread. So if you're the son of God, why not use that power? Well, what's wrong with making bread? It's not that Jesus can't do it. Later on, he would feed thousands with bread and fish from a boy's lunchbox. What's wrong is that Satan was tempting Jesus to use his power selfishly, and Jesus knew that he was sent to use it in behalf of others. Then the tempter strikes again. And I don't know if you can see it on this, but way at the very top is Jesus, and to the right of him is this dark-looking angel thingy, and that's Satan. So that's the top of the pinnacle. So he strikes again, since you are the son of God, why not throw yourself off the pinnacle of the temple? Because God will send his angels to keep you from getting hurt. The, the psalm says so. Well, so what's wrong with believing so strongly in what is written in scriptures that he could trust the angels to protect him? Later on, Jesus would defy the laws of nature and gravity when he walked on water. But Satan was tempting Jesus to use his power to produce a spectacle that would only glorify himself. Jesus glorified his father alone. And again, worship me, Jesus, and I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. Well, what's wrong with the Son of God assuming control over everyone and everything? Isn't that what we're expecting him to do at the end of time? What's wrong is that Satan was offering a power that he did not have for an allegiance that belonged only to God. And Jesus answered, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Now when Satan tempted Jesus to make bread out of stone, stones, he replied, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. What's wrong with all of these temptations is that they come from a word other than God's, offering Jesus the easy way to his own personal glory. The author T.S. Eliot writes, The last temptation is the greatest treason to do the right deed for the wrong reason. The right deed for the wrong reason. So where are your temptations? Now, I'm not talking about the temptation to eat a Snickers bar if you've given chocolate up for Lent. I'm not talking about Homer Simpson and his love of beer and his excess, excessive passion for donuts. I'm not even talking about the temptation to commit adultery or take something that doesn't belong to you. Temptations, yes, but these are not cases of doing the right thing for the wrong reason. A very blatant example of what I mean would be for you to give a whole lot of money to a worthy cause in order to receive recognition, maybe your name on a building, to be a mentor to an underprivileged kid in order to meet his beautiful older sister. And here's one that many of us, all too many of us, experience too often, to, do, to volunteer to help with something so that we can be in control of it. There are some real and dangerous temptations we 
face in our own spiritual lives as well. There's the temptation to believe that being a good person means that you most certainly have God's salvation. The temptation to assume that having your name on the church rolls means salvation is yours. There's the temptation to assume that your activity in charitable and church-related organizations assures your salvation. But the most, temp the most dangerous temptation of all, the one that's the greatest threat to Christianity and the world, is to believe that since we are saved by God's grace through faith, good works and works of love are irrelevant and unnecessary. You can't earn God's favor and salvation by being a good person or belonging to church or even being active in church. We are saved by God's grace in Jesus Christ alone. It is out of thanksgiving and love for God and our neighbor that we do our good works and our unselfish acts for others. But that is so hard for us to do, even when we start out with the best of intentions. The good news is this. Jesus took the hard way for you, for us. He could have turned the stones into bread. He could have enjoyed being the attention, focus of attention as he floated down from the top of the temple. He could have bowed down to Satan and assumed control of all the earth but he didn't. He took the hard way from the fasting and deprivation of the wilderness to the pain and betrayal of, and agony on the cross. And he did it all for you. As he hung dying on the cross, Jesus was tempted again by one of those criminals that was hanging there beside him. If you are the son of God, save yourself and us. The other criminal rebuked him, reminding him that they were receiving what they deserved, but that Jesus had done nothing wrong. And then he turned to the Lord and said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, truly, you will, I tell you that today you will be with me in paradise. And paradise is another term for the garden, the Garden of Eden the realm of perfect communion with God. And after your time of wilderness is over and when the number of your days are completed, because of his love for you, Jesus will lead you back to the Garden of Eden, to paradise, where all things are fresh and pure and holy, the way they're supposed to be. Thanks be to God. Amen.
please rise as you are able for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In these beginning days of Lent, let us pray for the world, the church, and for all people according to their needs. For all nations torn by war, poverty, or internal strife, that they may know your peace and harmony. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the church, that with Christ we may turn from evil and be obedient to your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those struggling in the wilderness of loneliness, despair, or sickness, especially we remember Brendan and Josh, Roby and Cindy, Terry, Christine and Irene, Denise, Earl and Jamie, Sharon, Kim and Barb, David and Kathy and their family, Gwenda, Jenny and Joe, Nancy, Sue and Loretta, Van and his family, and Bethany and Tammy. That you nourish them with the bread of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who grieve the loss of dear ones, the family and friends of Cadence Allen, the family and friends of Aiden Chip Nelson, the family and friends of Susan Knutson, the family and friends of Barb Ellison, the family and friends of Taylor Price, and ask that you surround them with your love, comfort, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this community that we offer you not only the words of worship, but also the deeds of justice and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks for all the faithful ones who have journeyed through the wilderness and now dwell in your paradise. Bring us with them to the eternal Easter feast of joy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayers, O merciful God, as we eagerly await the day of resurrection and rebirth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. Let us pray. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Jesus Christ, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. All are welcome to the Lord's table. We have regular bread and we also have gluten-free bread. Just ask your server for the gluten-free bread. We also have wine and we have non-alcoholic wine. The, the non-alcoholic wine are the, the light-colored, um, in the light-colored cups in the center of the trays. I invite the assistants to come forward. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O God of life, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. The first announcement is to tell you that the cleaners on Thursday, the people who will clean the church on Thursday, will begin cleaning at 1 o'clock and not 1.30 as it was in the newsletter. Jim, do you want to go next? Thank you. Well, Sharon and Carrying Hands is coming up. It's a week from uh, this coming Tuesday that we'll head downtown to feed 150 to 200 uh, homeless people at Mary Jo Copeland's place. <clears throat> our our sign-up sheet is pretty much complete. We have all the jellos signed up to make and all the cakes signed up to make. We could use one more person to sign up for the serving uh, to head with us downtown when we actually uh, uh, do the actual uh, serving at, uh, at Mary Jo's. And, uh, we could use three or four more on, on Monday. So this, the timeline will be uh, a week from this Monday, nine o'clock here, and we will work with Kelly to prepare the full meal and then uh, have your jello and cakes uh, in place here at church before 10 o'clock on Tuesday, the, the actual day of the event. And, uh, and we'll be heading here from, from Joy to, to head downtown uh, at 10.30 Tuesday morning. Now, the thing is, we will collect an offering to help offset the cost of the food. Uh, they were, the, the cards were not put into the bulletin, but as you leave the, uh, uh, and go into the narthex, there are envelopes available there, and then there are envelopes available also over at the little table where the sign-up sheet is. Thank you all so much for your participation in this great event. Thanks, Jim. Well... Maybe you noticed, um, as you came in, that there's a poster out there that says something to give up, X on the up for Lent. Um, we're talking about Lutheran World Relief. 
personal care kits, and I have an assistant. I, hope is going to come. Do you have the... That's all right. Never mind. We'll just talk about it. <laughs> so the things that they would like us to provide are a towel, a comb, a towel, a comb, an adult toothbrush, um, nail clippers, soap, soap, <laughs> bar, so, bar soap. So not one of those bath sheets. Bigger is not better. They want a specific size of towel. Um, adult toothbrush, single one. If you get the multiple pack, we can separate that. We need to separate them. Um, bars of soap, no bath gel, not that stuff. Just bars of soap, and they do sell them still. I picked one up this weekend. <laughs> um, oh, and nail clippers. They come in a variety of sizes, not the not for pets and horses, <laughs> human size. <laughs> and I don't oh my gosh. <laughs> I think that's it. We'll have examples out in the narthex with, uh, you know, for supplies. So whatever you feel like bringing, we'll have baskets, and let's fill those baskets. Thanks. Thanks. Um, this is, you can still give something up for Lent if you wish, but it's helpful to the world if we give something away. And this is one of the reasons why we want to do this. Um, it's not just to people like who've been in an earthquake or um, some other disaster. Yeah, they would like to wash their hands if they could or wash their faces. Um, but this is something that has to do with the livelihood of people now. If I push this button, will it start playing? Thank you. And this is in the Andes. Brushes. They may seem like simple gifts, but they can make a huge difference. High up in the Peruvian Andes, Lutheran World Relief has been working to help dairy farmers improve their standard of living. While the region of Cajamarca is renowned for its artisanal cheeses, poor hygiene practices and rustic facilities affected the quality of the cheese and made it difficult for peasant farmers to compete on the open market. A project known as ReadyPack worked to bring cheese manufacturing to world-class standards and worked with dairy farmers to improve their hygiene practices. Personal care kits helped to cement lessons on the importance of proper hygiene when milking cows. Tradicionalmente, la mujer se bañaba con las manos sucias, este, recibían la leche en baldes sucios, Este, no limpiaban las ubres de las vacas, transportaban la leche en condiciones inadecuadas. Nosotros hemos promovido a través del proyecto las buenas prácticas de higiene en el ordeño. Si es que también se hace esta promoción en los niños en la escuela, constituye un complemento muy importante. El hecho de que los niños estén recibiendo buenas prácticas de higiene en la escuela constituye un soporte también para promover los cambios en estas buenas prácticas en el ordeño. Sanitary practices have helped LWR dairy farmers double milk production, improve the quality of their milk, and improve the quality of their cheese that they now sell on the regional and national market. Your simple gift of a personal care kit is part of such successes. Oh. Now we don't need to watch it again. Well, there we go. Well, in, again, in the personal care kits, we've got um, a list there of the items that we need. You can make a kit yourself and bring it in, and we've got baskets in the, in the narthex where you can put it, or if you just want to buy toothbrushes or just want to buy combs. Um, you don't have to fill up a whole kit because we'll put them together. Um, there are some sheets that look like this around in the back. It's got more detailed instructions, please pick one up and consider what you can give for Lent. Thanks. Okay, time to sing. I think that's, that's all the announcements. Great.